The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises within ourselves, that we may be preserved by your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all of these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as the entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees, and all the Jews, do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesies rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings make plain where the church has found itself for some time, and especially during the pandemic. Caught between preserving the tradition, and making necessary changes, and trying to figure out how to do both. On the one hand, Deuteronomy declares, you must not take anything away from what I command you, nor add anything to it, but you must keep the commandments of your Lord of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. On the other hand, Jesus declares, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me teaching human precepts as doctrines. And then Jesus says, you abandon the laws of God and, and hold fast to human tradition. The readings make clear that sorting out tradition and change, law and grace, it's not new. And it's not easy. It goes all the way back 
to some Pharisees noticing that Jesus' disciples eat with hands defiled. That is, they eat with dirty hands. They eat without first washing their hands. And this is not only un, unhygienic, <laughs> it goes against the, the tradition of the elders. And the Pharisees become upset. And I get it. People, human beings, we love our traditions. Even if our tradition is innovation, doing something different in worship every Sunday just because we can. We love doing it as we've always done it, and we love doing it differently because we can. We love our traditions. With everything else changing in our lives and in our society and in the world, we want church to be the same. We want God to be the same. We want our faith to be the same. Or at least we want the church to change, our faith to change, our God to change in ways that we approve of or can control. And so we sing, a mighty fortress is our God, and on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. But there's more going on in Deuteronomy than tradition. Deuteronomy is warning God's people about the the life-taking, death-dealing consequences of forsaking, adding to, or taking away from God's law. Deuteronomy is warning us against manipulating or molding God's law to meet the fleeting desires of the moment. And there's even more going on than that. It is by observing the law that we bear witness. It is by observing the law that people are drawn to God. We used to sing it. They will know we are Christians by our love. And observing the law is a way that we pass on our identity and our faith to our children and our grandchildren. So there's something to be said for keeping the tradition. And yet, before we become zealous keepers of the law, who condemningly point our Bibles at others, or disappointingly quote scripture to the church and its leaders, Mark slows us down. Yes, some Pharisees notice that Jesus' disciples eat without washing their hands. They eat with dirty hands. They eat with hands defiled. And there is so much more going on here than hygiene, more than um, wash your hands before dinner, who knows where they have been. And so they raise their objections to Jesus. Why do your disciples eat with hands defiled? And when they do, the, the, the Pharisees find themselves corrected by Jesus' teaching. Jesus calls them self-deceiving because the Pharisees believe that they can keep themselves protected and, and healthy, and pure, and safe by scrupulously keeping 
the law. And worse than that, the Pharisees are using the law, the tradition of the elders, to point out flaws in others so that they can discount them, so that they can dismiss them. And they are using God to justify discounting and dismissing others. And so Jesus takes on the Pharisees. And what Jesus says is, it's not what goes into your body, it's what comes out of your heart. While Deuteronomy is concerned with the keeping of the law, Jesus is concerned with the condition of the heart. Jesus is concerned with what animates, with what motivates the heart. And that what animates and motivates the heart comes from God. And so Jesus is known, at least in Mark's gospel, for ignoring the letter of the law in order to do what comes from God. And so, for example, Jesus heals on the Sabbath, breaking the tradition of the elders. In fact, working on the Sabbath, breaking a commandment. And those who are scrupulous keepers of the law, who don't appreciate um, Jesus' way of keeping and not keeping the law, they kind of get ticked off. They get upset. And eventually Jesus' way of keeping and not keeping the law overcomes him as his critics, his enemies, seek to have Jesus put to death. And Jesus dies on the cross. But God raises Jesus to new life, which is some kind of divine affirmation of Jesus' way of keeping and not keeping the law. In the resurrection, Jesus seems to say, and God seems to approve and agree that it is not about the scrupulous keeping of the law. It's about the state or the condition of our hearts. And so the invitation um, in this reading is not to examine others' hands, as the Pharisees do, but to examine our own hearts. What comes out of our hearts? Is it from God? When what comes out of our hearts is from God, we are free to show mercy. And we do not need to worry about keeping uh, scrupulously the rules and regulations. So we are free to show mercy. More importantly, when we examine our hearts, um, our motives for our actions, we all discover our need of Jesus. Because just as no one can perfectly keep the law. No one's motives in their heart are 100% pure. No one's motives, including ours, are 100% pure. And so we all need Jesus to save us. If we want to do 
If we want to examine others, Jesus would say, it's not enough to look at their dirty hands. We need to come to know what faith, what motives come out of the heart and what works these dirty hands were doing. This calls for relationships rather than dismissing and discounting others in the name of God. But the place to begin is not to examine others' hands, not to examine others' hearts, but to examine our very own hearts, both individually and as communities of faith. You know, those who study the human heart, um, not so much in the physical sense, but in the life sense, will say that when you look into people's hearts, you will find two, one of two things. Uh, you will find um, hope, you will find wisdom, and you will find grace on the one hand, or you will find fear. Uh, you will find uh, closedness, closed rather than wise. Um, and um, instead of grace, um, you will find um, an absence of love. And what those who study the human hearts in kind of the life ways would say, depending on what you find in your heart, it determines how long you're going to be around. So if we look in our hearts and we don't like what we see, we can ask Jesus to give us a new heart. I will write my law upon them and I will give them a new heart. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. Um, when we examine our hearts, um, we can determine um, what actions make us glad and what actions make us sad, what actions give away, give us life and give life to others, and what actions take away life from us and take away life from others. We can discover our relationship to our traditions. Do we cling tra to traditions somehow out of fear and insist that others cling to them as well? Or do we have traditions that bring us joy, that give us life? And are we eager for others to share our traditions because they might find joy and life as well? And if they don't, well, that's okay. Jesus invites us, Jesus calls us to turn our gaze away from the hands of others and into our own hearts. And the question the basic question is, when we examine our hearts, do we find Jesus there or someone or something else? If you don't find Jesus there, <laughs> ask Jesus to enter your heart, and Jesus will. But be ready. Just as Jesus entered the tomb and did not stay there, Jesus will enter your heart, my heart, our hearts, and burst it open with new life, with new love, with abiding grace that will overflow from us uh, that we might share with others. You know, I always go to the Gospel of John, and um, to the woman of the well, Jesus talks about springs of living water. That's what will flow from our hearts. It'd be so fun to talk about 
things we could and should do uh, to share the love of Jesus from our hearts. But I'm going to bite my tongue here and just say this. If what comes out of your hearts makes you glad and makes God glad, then Jesus is probably in your heart. If what comes out of your heart makes you glad and makes God glad, takes it both, Jesus is probably in your heart. Because if it makes you glad and God glad, it's probably making others glad as well. Let's let that be our tradition. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace. Amen.